Welcome to another How to Halloween edition of Media Litter Sandwich. Today we have co-founder Steve and his son Zach. And of course we got Crazy Mark from CrazyMark.com and I'm Toten from Toten.com. But no one is here to watch us. We, we want to know about How to Halloween with Steve and Zach. You know, please tell us how it started. Give us some background information. You bet. Um, Zach and I used to live on Lingsburg. Great community, but for 11 years we didn't get a single trick or treater. Oh man, it, it sucked. It was it was terrible. Hey, you're, you're stuck with all that candy you bought. Well, that was the upside. Oh, that was the upside. So, but um, 2005, when he was five years old, we moved into in, uh, Hazlitt, and uh, we said, let's build something cool for the trick or treaters that came up to the house. So, what did we build, Zach? We built a uh, Frankenstein monster that you could shock to life, and the strobe light would come on, and you could see his bones. And he jiggle his head and come to life. So oh, man. We, we actually have Frank out here uh, on the floor. We've brought Frank back to life. Oh. Just show it off. But anyway, so so that that project kind of set the hook for us. That each year we try and build something new and cool and different and got into new technologies. We've uh, got into robotics and pneumatic actuators and hacking into Wii remotes and mm -hmm. um, all sorts of cool stuff. So so you know. So if it's about you know that kind of stuff, do you ever do like a haunted house, or is this the only thing you organize in the year? Do you organize anything else? Um, haunted house would be awesome, but um, I don't know if I want that pressure, you know, <laughs> and, and that commitment. It, it, it's a lot. There's a lot of financial right. pressure with that, but there's always working at them as well. There's also great charity ones. Right. I mean, the cool thing about about this, what we what we do is that um, it basically only exists for a couple hours. And then, right. But you know, it takes you know few hundred hours get ready but then exist for a couple for two hours and it's done how, how early do you start uh preparing it depends yeah we start planning in springtime yeah right springtime it, it, it all depends we, we start planning in springtime then we screw around and wait till the last minute and start building <laughs> that's how we operate so. excellent excellent well it's all worth it you know even though you spent 300 hours those few hours impact a lot of lives there who actually go up and you make them happy. They scream with joy and poop their pants. Yeah, it's, it's fantastic. We, I mean, we've, we've been at it for uh, 11 years now. We get people come up and say, hey, we really love the Ghostbusters one you did or the, uh, the Pirates one. You know, they all have their kind of favorite, favorite theme that we've done. Well, what's your all's favorite? What do you all love to do as far as the theme is concerned? I think something that's not, you know, cliche something that doesn't always fit with Halloween but can kind of uh, be expanded on easily yeah. yeah like like which one uh, like we did a mutant laboratory one yeah. year oh. which, so that was really cool uh, family wow. friends were in a garage and it was like a science experiment gone wrong they uh, you had to defend the house against yeah that was pretty cool. kids could blast them with infrared guns that we made and all sorts of fun <laughs> stuff. oh so they get interactive then oh yeah yeah, yeah definitely oh, yeah. Most of the stuff we do is interactive. Um, yeah, I saw the uh, you guys' little haunted house area over there. It, 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 is that kind of what you're talking about, all the interactivity? Yeah, that's uh, right. Um, the one we have this year is uh, Laser Pong. Oh, I've seen that too. That's so amazing. control a game with uh, lasers. But now we actually use that to set a Guinness World Record for the most number of people playing laser or playing Pong. We did nice. uh, 251 people playing one game of Pong. So you all set a world record then? Yeah. Whoa, you heard it right here, people. Wow. What's that? I said, you heard it all right here, people. Right, there you right, go, right here. here. So all how do you healthy. organize that? How do you organize something that, that, that that's record-breaking? How do you organize that? There's a, a conference that takes place in Sandusky uh, every uh, January. We're getting ready for it now. It's uh, called Code Mash. Mm -hmm. it's, a, it's a tech conference. They get into a lot of a lot of stuff, you know, programming and uh, different languages and different hardware and all sorts of stuff. That's also family-friendly. Right. They've let us get up and talk about our Halloween stuff a couple of times. Just some of the behind-the-scenes stuff. When we propose to them, there's you know you got a, a few thousand people going to your your event. Why not we try this? Uh, try to set a world record, and we came up with this idea of. Uh, so we basically brought in all these people into this room, passed out laser pointers. We have a webcam that watches the screen, and we just watch where they're pointing the lasers, and then we we can figure out where they're trying to get the, the battle to go. Oh man! So you know. So I'm looking around this place. I still can't quite tell what is it. What what is it? Is it a con? Is it an expo? What is How to Halloween? Was it fall or any? How do, how do you promote it? What? <laughs> that is a, that's a struggle that we have. 
How would you classify it? Um, it's kind of its own thing. <laughs> it's kind of, yeah, it's kind of a, a mutant that's taking taking a life on, on its own, I guess. It's I don't know. Kind yeah, we're of trying what? we're trying to uh, promote the Hatsu and do it yourself spirit, and we're trying to get uh, weirdos a chance to show off the cool stuff. Right. You know, we're uh, just trying to keep people entertained, trying to inspire them. Who knows? It's uh, it's a wild thing. It's a spookorama fest, and it's fun for the whole family. There you there's go. monsters, there's right. aliens, there's a lot of Halloween theme, a lot of uh, spooky, creepy stuff. Oh, so yeah, yeah you cosplay know, cosplay groups, multiple cosplay groups. Oh, yeah. yeah. How do you reach out to the cosplay groups? Um. They just kind of naturally gravitated to it, and we, we were, we we're friends with the Shootagon people, and um, you know we're not trying to steal any business from them, but co- part of cosplay it's a different, is... It's a different time of year for them, so it's right. fine. Well, it's a different thing, too. You know, right. But, uh, the thing that the hook, I think, for a lot of cosplayers is they like to build their own costumes, and mm-hmm. that's really kind of the vibe we're after. It's like, you know, be inspired to create something on your own. Go out, go out in the garage and create something cool, you know? So I think that's where we got the hook for their cosplayers, and they're awesome. That's sweet, man. Now... Out of your events, okay, looking back on your events and uh, the activities that took place at your events, uh, tell us the one, I, I think that like the, maybe the top three out of your mind that really has drawn in the people that have had, that's brought them in. So the top three events from our, our top three things from our events yes, that really yes. draw people in? Yeah, that you've heard as far as feedback is concerned. Man, that's a good, that's a good question. Yeah, yeah. Um, you no, know, a lot of people just really get into get into the big spectacle of it all. You know, just that uh, um, going in, going in like uh, my my partner Jerry took his yeah. PT Cruiser and converted it into a uh, a Batman tumbler. You know, oh. from uh, the, the the Chris Nolan films. Okay, and that's a huge draw. You know, yeah. and then um, just all the costume characters. You can't go wrong with having Star Wars and Ghostbusters and um, all those guys. Those are always those are always huge too. Yeah, I noticed that you made the convention center keep the lighting low. It's low lighting like a haunted house in here. Right. Um, most of the time when you do something with Halloween, it, it, it's dark. You got, you got dark in you know, front of your house. You, know, you have really cool lights, uh, dark haunted houses, all that stuff. And a lot of stuff we, that Jerry and I built and, and Zach built were designed for low lighting. Yeah. So that's really, right. we're really trying to cause, uh, create a, like a real cool atmosphere. We turn the lights on here and it's like a normal event in here. It's kind yeah, of boring, you don't, you know? yeah, I don't want to do that. No. <laughs> So, are you partnership with uh, uh, with the Lansing Zombie Walk, or is that is that a separate thing, or are you guys together? Because I see you advertise it on on the website as well. Uh, for the past three years, uh, uh, we have partnered with them. Uh, actually, this is the third there. We've we've been in partnership with them, and they've had three people, three different people organizing it. So it's been like being handed off. Okay. Uh, so we've kind of t- picked it up this year, taken it under our wing, and then we've got uh, a couple. Of Couple of people are going to take it over next year and, and really take it take it uh, uh, to the home, you know, or lurch across the, the finish line or whatever. So does that add for I, I know I know it's always been uh, um, yourself and Jerry that ran How to Halloween, but uh, uh, I, with partnering up with the uh, Lansing Zombie Walk, do you notice like a variety when it's handed off from uh, uh, showrunner to showrunner? Uh, and are you? Like, how does that work? Do you think it adds more to the walk or just make it a completely different event every year? Um, first two years is, is, is basically kind of the same event. Mm-hmm. And um, this year we're trying to really uh, meld it a bit more with our event. Right. Um, you know, so we're, at, we're offering, um, if you show up as a, as a zombie with a can of food, make a donation to the Greater Lansing Food Bank, you'll actually get into our event for free tomorrow. That's fantastic. Yeah, we're, we're big charity guys. Oh, I mean, yeah. I, I actually exactly. made a plan. I used to do a ton of zombie walks. I still do. And now I actually turn down zombie walks that, are, uh, um, that aren't that are attached to any charity. So that's why a lot of my pub crawls have right. went away. You know, I, I feel like if I'm coming out there, I want to do some good as well as well oh, yeah. as promoting it's, them. That's great. It's great. And these, uh, plus, getting these zombies in here just adds more to the, you know, the, the vibe in here. Mm-hmm. You know, the more gruesome and cool costume to have the, the yeah. better it, it is for us too so absolutely oh yeah oh yeah now uh, the thing i noticed also here was that again the diversity and the family um i noticed this year in particular though i mean how has the entire um 
downplayed atmosphere of clowns affected this uh, particular con? Good question. That is a good question. I don't know if we have a, uh, a, a definitive uh, vibe on that. but uh, I mean, has that affected attendance? It, with is the it whole something clown you're trying to avoid? Or, you, no, maybe we should have came out and said this is a clown-free zone. You know, like a peanut-free zone, maybe we should say clown-free. Oh. You know? I don't well, know. you got a big clown... Uh, um, we one are, of your vendors has a big clown part. Their their yeah. mini haunted house. Yeah, I think it's awesome. Yeah, you, it's my, great. My wife is actually a professional yeah. clown too. You know, he the thing is, well. we're we have a lot of friends that do the scary clown things for haunted houses and charity events, and I know it's affected them a lot because it gives this negative connotation. I, I've even noticed Halloween stores shying away from selling uh, clown masks, um, and it's just it's. Uh, it, it is, I don't know what it is about clown, but they really seem to affect people on a really uh, subliminal level for some some reason. It's, I mean, well, we have Creepy the Clown here today, and he has all he's gotten has been laughs and chuckles and kids squeezing his nose for a honk, and nobody kids are putting their hands in Creepy the Clown's mouths. I would expect them to, <laughs> to run away, you know. But I'll, I'll give you a little behind the scenes from the clown world, though. Just for my wife, though, she's she's a she's actually a pretty clown. Oh, and she gets a lot of old men hitting on her. Oh, <laughs> it's a, it's really bizarre. <laughs> I give you guys a lot of a lot of respect. I mean, I so thankful for you guys inviting us out oh, here. Man. Thanks for coming out. We, we really appreciate it. Appreciate it. One more time, time, please, please shout out all your links. You know, give your guys self a good good promotion shout out. All right, so the website is how two halloweencom We are very active on Facebook. It says how to Halloween. Um, and uh, what else? That's, that's pretty much it. That's pretty what we prim- primarily hit. All right. Thank you again. Uh, this is Crazy Mark from CrazyMark.com. Right on. <laughs> and I'm Toden from Toden.com. And, of course, YouTube.com backslash Toden K. You can find Meteor Lair Sandwich at MeteorLairSandwich.com. Pod Bros. The audio, by the way, was brought it's to you by Pod for Pod lunch, Bros. dinner, and all other times. Oh, yeah, when you're hungry uh, for some media and you need some help, go ahead and give us a listen. Hopefully we can give you some media ideas. Media sandwich. Thank you for watching. Thank you for listening. And I really hope you enjoyed our discussion.